Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank the Lord Jesus for giving me a chance to give my testimony today. I pray that this testimony will glorify the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. Yesterday was a Father's Day. In fact, I have four fathers. My birth father, my uncle who adopted me, my father-in-law, and of course, my heavenly father. I would like to share my five big turning point in my life. One, I was adopted by my aunt when I was born in 1937. Two, I was a victim of the atomic bomb dropped over Hiroshima in 1945. Three, I married a Canadian, Charles Rammel, in 1965 and became a Canadian citizen in 1975. I converted from Buddhism to Christianity in 2008. Five, I have become a storyteller as a survivor of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. When people react to my life, they say, you have had such a stormy life. Come to think of it, of course, my life had ups and downs, but I was given those words from the Bible. 2 Corinthians 4, lines 8 and 9. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We are perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do, but we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. The first turning point in my life was when I was adopted by my aunt and uncle at three months old. And my new father registered me as their daughter. This may sound strange to your ears, but it was not unusual for Japanese children to move within a larger family. My birth father was a devout, devout Buddhist minister who traveled the country teaching Buddhism. My family, which also included two older brothers, were poor because they have no income. So my birth mother took a job as a typist. And my birth mother became pregnant with me. It was her older sister, my aunt, who then asked to adopt a baby she was carrying. My aunt and uncle were wealthy. They had no children. So my birth mother said yes. My birth father died when I was four years old. And I take comfort that fact that I will see him again in heaven because he never spoke about worshiping Buddha. In his book, he said, it's about looking up to heaven, looking up who is in the light and to think and pray beyond the Buddha. Therefore, my hope is that because of God's mercy and grace, I will see him again and also because of what God write. In uh, John 1, 5, his life is the light that shines through the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. 
My aunt, new mother, became sick and bed for forbidden, bedridden. So I didn't have any bonding time with her. When I was five years old, she died. When I was seven, my uncle, my new father married Misao. Mother Misao became my new mother who loved me more, I think, than her son who was born in 1945. She treated me so tenderly with love and I was also the apple of my father's eye. My family is now my grandmother, my parents, my little brother, me, the five of us living happily. The second turning point in my life was when I was in grade three, the atomic bomb was dropped over Hiroshima in August 6th, 1945. This morning, I was playground of my school, playing with my friends. Suddenly, I saw a flash of light. Then there was sand and dust all over. It was like being in a thick crowd or a tornado. I couldn't see anything. This was the mushroom crowd that spread all over Hiroshima. I could hear children screaming and a minute later, someone shouted, get back into your classroom. When we dashed into our classroom and broken glass was all over the floor, the teacher told us to go home with the help of the bigger students. On the way home, the rain started, a black rain. The black rain contained atomic nuclear poison, smog, and embers. The sun became orange, and there is a rainbow, which I later learned when I became a Christian. God spoke of Genesis 9.13. I do set my bow on the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. The intense heat of 4,000 degrees Celsius and the shock waves caused by the explosion instantly killed about 80,000 people. The city of Hiroshima was demolished in a few seconds by some miracle, probably because I was shielded by a tree. I survived thanks to God's mercy and grace. My father's walking in the center of city near ground zero. He came home late that night he was poisoned by the radiation and couldn't eat and had diarrhea. On August 15th, Japan surrendered to the USA. On August 16th, my father died. His last words were that he wished there would be no more war and that the world will have a peaceful future. He also told us he had buried food, sugar, miso, rice, wheat, salt, and dry beans in our backyard. Also, he had saved some money. The food was very helpful, but money was no longer worth anything because the government changed the money into new money. A father, 220 people lost their lives. 
2,020,000 people, people lost their lives, often dying a slow, painful death, especially to cancer, leukemia. After the war, Hiroshima citizens struggled, struggled from a shortage of food, nowhere to live. The explosion also orphaned about 6,000 children in Hiroshima. No matter what, we have to live. My cousin Yoshi, at that time, four years old, was one of those orphans. Yoshi's mother was killed that day. Yoshi was also adopted by his aunt on his mother's side and took their name to continue that family line. Yoshi wrote a poem which impacted me greatly and I will never forget. I will read it now. My mother vanished. A sad memory. Each time I see my friends, fathers and mothers, I can't help but think, if there hadn't been a war, if there hadn't been a war, how happy I would be. Father on the right side, mother on the left side. But my father was killed in a faraway battle. My gentle, gentle mother vanished in the atomic bomb. Only I remain all alone. No more war. I've had enough. Yoshi is now retired and had three grandchildren and lives in Hiroshima happily. After my father died, Mother Misao told me I was adopted. My father had said that I was not to be told, but now he was dead. She said I should return to my birth mother who was still alive and now had two sons and a daughter. My birth mother wanted me to return to her, but I was the only person who could support Mother Misao, who became ill after the atomic bomb shock. My little seven years old brother. So I said I wanted to stay. The words from the book of Ruth come to my mind. Uh, book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 5. Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Mother Misao never had work experience, but by God's mercy and grace, we had a big house. So she rented part of a house as a home for university students. Proverbs uh, 10, line 22. The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow with it. After I graduated from high school, I worked at the bank for three years. At that time, arranged marriages were common and matchmakers arranged for couples to meet each other. I am a survivor of the atomic bomb with no father and no university degree. These were considered minus points. And Many atomic bomb survivors were discriminated against marrying by Japanese society. Rumors also started that the survivors would have 
deformed children or keep the poison in their bodies and spread it around. The third turning point was when I met Charles. Charles didn't mind that I had been exposed to radiation and he also didn't mind whether we have children or not. He said, love is the most important thing. We are married in 1965 in Japan and moved to Toronto in 1975. I never thought I would marry a Canadian and the differences in culture between West and East have made our marriage challenging, even today. But our marriage is a gift from God and we celebrate our 56th anniversary this year. I had my ideal Japanese man in my dreams, but that had never happened. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of the unity. By God's mercy and grace, Charles and I have two perfect daughters, Lisa and Tammy. When I began writing my testimony, I had been, it had been snowing and everything was covered with white. When repenting my, my sins, the Holy Spirit gave me those words. Isaiah 1.18 Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. They will be like wool. I felt the snowflakes were my sins and the Lord was cleansing me. The fourth turning point in my life was when I covered because when I converted from Buddhism to Christianity in 2008, my family in Japan is Buddhist and my birth father was a faithful Buddhist and a missionary. Even since I was small, I used to go to the temple with my grandmother and I was influenced by my family. Despite this, I had no conviction to believe the Buddha. The teaching of Buddha or its philosophy, sutra, were too difficult for me to understand. I used to belong to the Vancouver Buddhist church and I went to there to worship. I live walking and I love nature. I used to walk, walk for daughter's Lisa's dog on the North Shore and go into the forest, admire the old trees, listen to the creeks, eat wild berries, see the wild life. West Vancouver, Vancouver Beach, the ocean, waves and blue sky and sunset. On these walks that I would ask myself, who created this beauty? I wished I could see something that I could not see and hear something I could not to hear. I wanted to experience something spiritual. I was searching and God said, Jeremiah 29, 13, and you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all your heart. 
in January 208, 2008, I went to Japan. I wanted to buy a Buddha's altar, which I didn't have since I immigrating to Canada. I found out that the cost would be at least thousand dollars and it would be quite heavy to bring back to Canada. At the same time, my friend Kazuko, who is Christian, gave me a Bible. I was hospitalized for 10 days at the time in the Hiroshima Red Cross Hospital for a health checkup. So I started reading the Bible because I knew it was a bestseller in the world. On the first day of reading it, in the first sentences, my question about who create, created the earth was answered. Genesis 1, lines 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The earth was hovering over the surface of the waters. Charles' ancestors on his mother's side were Scottish and English. On his father's side were German and Danish. Charles is Canadian. I am Japanese. My two children are Scottish, English, German, Danish, Canadian, and Japanese. I was asking another question. What is my nationality? What is my identity? God's mercy and grace answered again. Philippians 3, 2. We are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus lives. God answered my desire to see something that I could not see and hear something I could not hear. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 8. Therefore, we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For things we see now will soon be gone, but things we cannot see will last forever. The Lord revealed to my answers from the Bible to my three questions within three months. When I start opening the book, astonishingly, miracle happened. There is truth. I was led by Lord, by his Holy Spirit, since I was given the Bible from my friend, Kazuko. In March 2008, Brother Beck, a German missionary, posted to Japan. I met, and his followers came to Vancouver for mission, a happy gathering. During that time, I was baptized in downtown Vancouver's Holiday Inn pool. Can you imagine? I was converted to Christianity within three months of opening the Bible. God's speedy salvation. In 2010, Charles and I were visiting Japan and Charles was baptized by Brother Beck. Before his baptism, one of Charles' friends told Brother Beck, Charles is a stubborn guy. So 
sink him deeply. Brother Beck replied, okay, I will kill him. I thought that was such a cruel reply because I didn't know, I didn't know the deep meaning of baptism. John 3, 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he gave me these words from Romans 14, 8. If we live, it is to honor the Lord. And if we die, it is to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Since then, Charles and I have been reading the Bible every morning and praying together. This moment, moment are the most peaceful time for us. There's no fighting, no arguing. The fifth and final turning point in my life was when I become a storyteller. In 2011, when there was the, the nuclear power plant tragedy in Fukushima, Japan, caused by the earthquake and tsunami. I realized it was time to tell my experience as an atomic bomb survivor to my grandchildren. I wrote my survivor story in Japanese, and then it was translated into English and in 2015 was published as a book. I republished it again in 2018, entitled Hiroshima, Memories of a Survivor. And this one is available from Amazon. We lived in Squamish at that time and the Squamish Library gave me a book lounge party. That was when I started to talk in public about my survival story. My message that nuclear power should only be used for day-to-day -day living and not for bombs. My brother became a nuclear physicist specializing in the peaceful use of nuclear energy. I believe that human thoughts are not sure and we do not know how to solve problems. And we are arrogant and self-reliant. I feel God is warning us that we are overstepping into his territory and wish to be humble and modest. There are about 13,000 nuclear bombs in the world. USA and Russia have more than 6,000 each. These bombs are a thousand times stronger than the bomb that was dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Gradually, by word of mouth, schools, universities, churches, colleges, and community centers started asking me to talk about my survival story. And I received encouragement from these audience, especially from the students. The issue of world peace is a very wide subject. But if we start to think of what can we do individually, even a small thing would be helpful. Perhaps my presentations are small, but by God's mercy and grace, they will bloom and flower as time goes by. I hope my message will reach people's hearts and create the buds of a peaceful society. The Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace told me, 
that my mission is planting seeds of peace through my talks and my books. I hope I'll be able to continue my mission as long as I have my health. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. My oldest granddaughter is named Kaori, which means in Japanese, fragrance. God words in uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14 is for her. Now, thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. My youngest granddaughter is named Amy, which means in Japanese, laughing, smiling, beauty. Scripture over her is from uh, Proverbs 31, 25. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall, reduce, she shall rejoice in times to come. I hope my granddaughters will continue the storytelling after I pass into glory for the sake of peace and nuclear non-proliferation. For as we are told in uh, Ephesians 2.14, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. In conclusion, I would like to show you a sentimental picture for me of the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park during cherry blossom season, showing you a city restored. And now I would like to read you a poem I wrote. It is titled Squamish because I was living in Squamish when I wrote it. Squamish means Looks, um, ma mother of my wind. That's the First Nations language. Chief, it looks like mountain, but it is one granite rock. It's the second largest rock in the world. The chief famous for rock climbing. Squamish is windy place after wind comes and goes uh, often wind comes and goes i didn't like it but i found in bible uh yeah Sachi got this i this hint from uh, john 3 8 which says something in fact the, the, the wind blows wherever it pleases you hear it you feel it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So, so it is with everyone born of the spirit. So I love wind now. So, Squamish. I'll, I'll, read. I'll read. Oh, Squamish, mother of wind, spirit of God. The chief stands rigidly in blue sky. Wavy ocean brings a soulful wind. In the forest, leaves are dancing and twirling. Snow is glittering on top of the mountain. Eagles and salmons are nesting their babies. In glorious nature, we breathe fresh air. O oh, Squamish, mother of wind, spirit of God, rejoice. And I rejoice when I think back of my life and how I have been guided by God's uncountable love, mercy, and grace. At last, but not least, I would like 
to thank Pastor Andy and Catherine who helped me and encouraged me. I couldn't make this testimony without them and many prayers of my friends. Thank you very much.